Hey there folks, it's Mike here and welcome to today's lesson. Now today's lesson is part of my course on debugging. So this is a free preview and you can go ahead and enjoy this lesson. If you'd like to see more lessons like this, go ahead and take a moment to check the course. Otherwise, let's go ahead into the lesson. All right, welcome again, folks, to this course. Now, in this lesson, I just want to give you a little bit of a taste of some of the things that you're going to be learning in this course. Consider this a lesson where you can just sit back and watch me do a few things and know that as you go through the course, these are some of the things that you're going to learn. I'm not going to put everything in here, but I'm going to show you enough that I hope will motivate you to show you just how interesting or how cool GDB is to actually debug. Debugging can actually become a fun process because debugging becomes the tool that gets you out of trouble. So with that said, let's just go ahead and look at a really simple example here to get us started here. Now, most of the lessons in this course are just going to start off giving you some single C source code like this here. We'll walk through it and go ahead and see what goes on. Now, usually I'm going to have you get in the habit of compiling on the command line and actually typing the files out and getting ready for the program. I'll also include make files later on so you can see that there's make, make clean, so you can rapidly iterate and play around with some of the flags here for the things that you need to do. Now, let's go ahead and dive into GDB though, because that's why you're here. You want to learn how to use some debugging tool here. So in this particular example, I just want to understand what this program is doing. There's not any crazy bugs here to per, per se, but we'll introduce some just to make things a little bit interesting in this lesson. So what I can do is just type GDB and then the actual program here. We'll get some information here. And I'm using a relatively new version of GDB, so you'll be able to use some of the more advanced features that are available. Now, some cool things that we can do in GDB once I clear the screen is just go ahead and start our program. Then we can list out the code and have some sort of reference for what we're doing. I'll go ahead and type uh, next to move us along, maybe a few lines at a time to move us a few lines through the code, and our program terminates. And we'll rapidly be able to run through our program multiple times here. So let's go ahead and start our program, but this time we'll restart and insert some breakpoints. Maybe at some of these functions that look interesting, like setup array or print array here. So I'll put a breakpoint at print array and another breakpoint at setup array. I can see these different info. Uh, breakpoints here and keep track of them in my program. I can even do things like conditionally break if I need to. I'll show you how to do that in this course. So let's go ahead and just run our program this time. And this time it'll automatically stop at, well, the interesting points every time we're about to do setup array or the print array function. Now, there's a lot of information on the left side of the screen here, even a lot of information above me. So the cool part about GDB is if I get rid of this window here, let's go ahead and just change the layout here so we can have some context here. A lot of people don't know about this. This is the text user interface that's going to help us walk through GDB. You can even see some of these indicators here, like the breakpoints that we have, so we know what's going on here. So let's go ahead and just walk through this function here. Maybe print out some information to see how to begin in this function. So we'll learn about what the program stack is and specifically the call stack, which is an important part to understand in this debugging process. So let's just go ahead and finish this. So we jump out here. We'll step into this function. Let's maybe step in 10 functions here and see where we're at. We'll print out some information and refresh here. And let's just go ahead and continue our program here. Maybe I don't want that breakpoint here, so let's just go ahead and check out what our breakpoints are in our program. Let's delete uh, breakpoint number four here and just continue our program up. Oh, if it's not being run, then it's not being run here. We'll also look at things here, like when we run our program here, uh, for figuring out what kind of threads are available. So I can do things like querying the threads here. So maybe I want to do other things too, like uh, querying about memory or examining pieces of memory here. So let's go ahead and print out some information about A here. Maybe find out what the type is here of A. And then we can continue our inspection here. So these are just a few of the things I'm going to show you how to do in GDB. Now, as I mentioned here, let's go ahead and introduce a little bug to this program. So we'll go ahead and exit out of this here. Uh, let's go ahead and open up our program and maybe create something like a segmentation fault. Of course, you might know how to do some of these things here. But let's just go ahead and introduce it somewhere in our program here. How about create some value here equal to 42. We'll create a pointer to null here. And then let's just try to uh, dereference this pointer here and set it to some other value here. All right, so maybe we've missed something here. Let's go ahead and do a remake here. Let's go ahead and run our program. And of course, we get a segmentation fault. So in this course, I'll show you how to find out if you've created some bugs here. So let's go ahead and relaunch GDB, this time using the text user interface and our program that we want to run here. 
Oops, making sure that I spell silent correctly. And you'll see we have this text user interface available to us again. And now I can actually run my program from start to finish here. And it'll tell me where the segmentation fault is. And we'll learn about the different types of debugging information that we can retrieve and set up from our compilers that can be read into GDB so that we can get as much information as possible to debug the segmentation fault. Again, we might want to print out some information about how we got there, print out the actual values, for instance, and then we can rerun this program, restarting the debugging process here. Let's go ahead and see if this is available in our scope here. I do see that that troublesome variable p of x is. So let's just display p of x every time we do something here. And we can kind of keep track of what's going on in state. And here we see that something illegal is happening, trying to dereference our null pointer. I'm not going to limit it just to tools like GDB. This is a debugging process where we'll learn about things like delta debugging and some strategies. There's also useful tools like Valgrind that you'll want to know about that can also help you debug if there's memory leaks or when memory doesn't get properly freed and all sorts of other tools. We'll even look at some visualization tools to help us out in this course. So that's just a quick run through of some of the different tools that we're going to learn about. And I hope you sit back, relax, and then when you finish this course, you revisit this lesson and see all that you've learned and all of these different cool tools. You'll know when to apply and how to use them.